Hey guys, this is Brendan Lemon. I will talk about this. I won't do the rehash of the entire article here in the uh, audio companion, but I'll just go through just very briefly kind of what this story is. Uh, I grew up in Metro Detroit. I grew up in a community called Plymouth Canton, and it was a very diverse community. It was one of the most probably unique places to grow up that I didn't really realize until I was much older, but um, it was very... It was very diverse. There were uh, th there was a lot of tier two and three auto suppliers that were in the area. Um, Bosch Systems, Ison Systems, Yazaki. So there were lots of different people from all over the world. There were lots of Germans who worked at the Daimler Chrysler and Bosch. There were lots of uh, of, of Asians who were over from Japan or elsewhere from. Uh, who would work at Yazaki or Ison Systems. Um, there were lots of, uh, of, of, of Indians from India and Pakistan who had moved to the area and, um, and really were... I, it was a very diverse neighborhood to grow up in. Um, there, were, there were people of all faiths. We had, um, um, we had the largest population of Arabs outside the Middle East in Dearborn, Michigan, which was just uh, kind of a few miles from where I grew up. Um, so there were lots of um, Arabic and Chaldean, Persians uh, as well, and people of many different faiths. There were there was two mosques in town. There was a um, Jewish temple. There was a Sikh temple. There was one of the largest Hindu temples in America. It was actually in in Plymouth Canton, and of course lots of Catholics and Protestants. Apparently, there was a big evangelical community that began building up when I was, you know, uh, in, probably in middle school or something. And, um, and there were people just really of all kinds of different colors and faiths and ethnicities and nationalities. And um, it was a great place to grow up. I, I was in diversity council in high school, and it wasn't until much later. Um, I was the president of the Irish Scottish American Club. My family's very Scottish uh, from Scotland, and I have a kilt and everything. The thing that is interesting is it wasn't until I graduated that I realized how different that really was how unique of an experience that really was most americans don't have that experience most americans i think grow up in communities that are that are very different um if if it's if it's quote unquote diverse it's because you know some black people live in the community there were <laughs> there were lots of black people in our community too you know it was basically right around detroit so um that uh that was true but for most other people it's you know you live in a community where you have black people and white people only or maybe uh, Hispanic people and white people only, and or maybe just white people only. Lots of communities in America are just white people only. Um, some communities, you know, maybe you have predominantly Asian people and white people, but this one was a really mixed community. There were lots of different people of different kinds, and I had friends in all different groups, and they were friends with me, and we, you know, we would... It, it's not even something I thought about until much later that I... I there were just... You, you just met up with your friends. My friend Kevin Chen was Chinese and, and still is Chinese, I'm sure, and never thought about the fact that he was Chinese very much. Spoke Chinese with his parents, um, hung out with him for years, never really thought about it. Um, you know, I, I, I friends with Kuma Ofori Mensa and his brother, uh, his twin brother, uh, Penin. They're both black, black African. Never thought about it, the fact that they were until much later. I mean, they just... You know, people just are the way they are. And when you grow up in a community like that, you never think about it. So this one party that I went to with a friend of mine in Westland, Michigan, was very strange because we, I never had, re, I'd never really been at a group gathering that was only white people. And it really stood out to me when I was there. I was like, what, what the, what is going on with this? Um, I, I didn't notice it until... The moment that we were asked to go downstairs and it suddenly became some kind of white supremacist proto clan rally or something. Um, and it was right when the lights turned on and you could see that there was a swastika flag. I don't even know where you buy that, by the way. There, I mean, I guess there's got to be a place that sells those online, but who manufactures that in today's world? Anyway... As soon as that turned on, uh, I suddenly was like, oh, shit, that's why this has been so weird. This is I've never been in a group gathering of only white people. 
even my family reunions aren't all white people. And we are a very white family. We're almost translucent. But only then did something like that settle in. And it was one of the most uncomfortable feelings I've ever had in my life. I thought because I had grown up, because I had so many non-white friends and so many different, you know, ethnic friends, and because I was in diversity council in high school, this was just after I graduated from high school a couple years later, I actually thought that there was some kind of secret betrayal that was going to take place. Like somehow this room full of white supremacist dudes knew that I was actually some kind of race traitor and had was friends with Asian people and, and black people and, and, and Muslims and Jews and things like this. And, uh, I just immediately, my blood went cold and my friend and I, who never, we just immediately were on the same page. We were like, we can, we need to get the fuck out of here. And, uh, that was terrifying. And they started talking and, and, I don't even really remember what they what was being said, but there was kind of it was like a recruitment meeting or something, and there were a lot of guys in the basement who were like agreeing, and there was probably about twenty something people there. It was pretty packed, and uh, I remember thinking, if I leave right now, if I just leave right now, it's going to be so obvious to everybody in here that I can't leave immediately and we had to wait for a little bit but I was so freaking out and worried that I didn't think I I I basically didn't I couldn't I couldn't even pay attention what was going on I was just too my brain was just too busy trying to figure out how do I get out of this situation in a way that doesn't you know get me killed or something um and finally a couple guys who were kind of in the front finished their drinks and started heading back. And then we took this as a cue to be like, okay, we can leave and pretend like we need to get drinks too. And we headed back up and all the women at the, all the girls and the women at the party were hanging out back. They had all headed out behind the house. I mean, this was in the suburbs. This wasn't like in the city and it wasn't in the country, which was kind of weird. And uh, it was just in the suburbs, just in a, sub- a in a suburban neighborhood basically they had all headed back outside to smoke and drink or whatever and um there was one guy who was hanging out upstairs and i think he was like a i don't know if he was like guarding or whatever but he was just hanging out upstairs so the other two guys who went up went to the fridge to go get drinks and then me and my buddy started heading to the front door and the guy said where are you guys going and he said my friend so nonchalantly oh we're just gonna grab a smoke that the guy inside, I guess, just, oh, yeah, okay, just registered it. And we headed outside, and nobody was out front, thank goodness. And we made a beeline to his car and just got the the hell out of there. Uh, it was one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Um, it just was very weird the way that that turned out. And it was very alarming because it was like, oh, my God, this stuff is just happening in our community. Like, it's just around here. I don't, to this day, really remember where that party was. Um, I, we, our only connection to it was that there was a a guy who was sort of a friend of a friend, uh, who was in a hardcore metal band in, um, Detroit. And I guess his connection to this party was that he knew, um, you know, one of the guys holding it. And I kind of just wanted to go out and party. I was sort of in a point in my life where I was like, yeah, let's just get wasted and try to hook up. So when I had heard that there was a party going on on like a Thursday night or whatever, I was like, yeah, let's, I don't care. Let's go. And uh, he connected me to it. Nobody said anything about what we were getting into. It was very weird. And uh, I'm glad that I'm all right. I never want to go uh, into a situation like that again. And, uh, and, and that was it. So I will never understand racism. I, I won't get it. I, I grew up in a community where people were accepted for who they were and everybody was friends with everybody. So I'll never understand if I live to be 100 anything about it. I think people should be judged by the content of their character and and their actions, and that's it. And good people and bad people, you know, Schultz and Eatson says the, the, uh, the battle bef- between good and evil cuts across every human heart. And that is true. You know, I think some ideas are better and worse than other ideas. And those are distributed throughout all people, you know, 
one of the worst ideas ever is racism. It makes no sense, and uh, I'll never understand it so long as I live. So uh, this is a different type of one of these audio things, but if you guys want to subscribe, I have a lot more of this coming out. Mostly it's helpful, mostly on sales and marketing, but I thought this was an interesting answer that I could give a story to. And uh, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, click through on this video to uh, the YouTube channel. There will be a link that will allow you to sign up for my newsletter. I know it's a little, it's a, it's a little deep, but uh, I'll be releasing some books soon that will be either free or at a discounted price, so you guys can check that out. They'll be on sales, sales development, and how to use comedy and storytelling in your ability to sell better. So uh, take care. Be well.